highlights from the high school spring concert, footage from the annual sheep shearing festival, and a look at the Rolling Ridge Lakeside Art Gallery. All of these stories and more are coming up on this edition of the North Andover Journal. Hello and welcome to this edition of the North Andover Journal. I'm Ron Carpenito. On May 19th, the North Andover Women's Club held a Shop Till You Drop event at the Stevens Estate. Local vendors attended the event, which had a wonderful turnout. State Rep Diana DeZoglio was on hand to award the Women's Club with a special certificate of appreciation. Also in attendance was Rosemary Connolly Smedeli, North Andover Selectman and President of the Women's Club. The Journal was there to see it all. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to North Andover Women's Club in recognition of your contribution to economic development and community building in the town of North, North Andover in hosting the Shop Free Drop event. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 19th day of May 2016. Signed by the Speaker of my house and yet by myself, Shop to your drop, and it's being hosted by the North Andover Women's Club. The event is 60 vendors, all hand selected, that are all from north of Boston up to Manchester, New Hampshire, over to Portsmouth, all the way over to Lowell, Massachusetts. They're artists, they're entrepreneurs, and they're craftsmen. We did not bring in any national chains, so this is all handmade merchandise. This is the first annual. We've never had this before. We were sitting around the table, the group of women. We came up with the idea. Once we secured Stevens Estate, I started making phone calls to potential vendors, and it basically sold itself out. I had all my vendors within three weeks. I, I, we absolutely love the Stevens Estate. It is actually owned by the town of North Andover, and it's a property that many don't even realize is here. And we wanted to highlight this beautiful estate with our event to not only bring people from North Andover here, but the, to the surrounding communities in hopes that they come to this event, this location for their future events, weddings, baby showers, family reunions, whatever it may be. It's absolutely gorgeous inside and they have been renovating it to bring it back to the original way. In the last year we did a total regrowth. Uh, we recently recruited all new members. We're reviving the group. At one point, the group was down to a very small group of women and had kind of lost um, its notoriety in the community. So last summer, several of us were recruited in to really bring it back up to life and to let everyone know in town that we're here and our goal is to do good things for the community. One of the hidden gems of North Andover is the Rolling Ridge Retreat and Conference Center. Their Lakeside Art Gallery cycles in new, beautiful artwork for every season. They have a par partnership with the Andover Artists Guild that supplies the paintings. This next segment features a chat with Reverend Larry Peacock, Executive Director of Rolling Ridge. Also featured is Uli Kapp, President of the Andover Artists Guild. Uh, welcome to Rolling Ridge and the Lakeside Art Gallery. For about seven years, we've been working with the Andover's Artist Guild to do four shows a year. We're blessed to have original art up for three months and then in one day it all disappears and the new show comes up and that people, people look forward to coming back to see what, what's new. The themes for the exhibits are chosen by Rolling Ridge staff. I did it for probably five years and now I have a, another staff person and he and I pour over quotes basically related to the seasons and uh, then we pick a, a short juicy quote and we send it out to the artist guild we let them know what the themes are for 2016 and send it out to them and say you know these are the themes be thinking of pictures that you have and we've even had uh, numerous artists who take the theme and uh, use that as a springboard for 
doing something new. And that's always fabulous to see what they come up with. So today we are hanging a new show. Um, the show is called, uh, it has a theme, and the theme is an eternal summer. There shall be an eternal summer in the grateful heart. We know the, uh, the theme ahead of time. We know it for the full year. And people are painting, um, I would think they are really adapting to the theme. But sometimes they have some paintings at home and think, OK, we can use that. I think so. so. Right now, I'm waiting for the artists to come. I will hang those pictures down. We have some other volunteers coming that will hang the pictures down. And then people are signing their paintings out and signing the new ones in. And then we hang them back up. And then we have a new show. And Danny from Rolling Ridge, he will help us to, um, he makes the labels, makes everything nice and neat. And then by tomorrow, I'm hoping we have a beautiful show hanging there. So first of all, it shows uh, the community what they are capable, what we are capable of. Everybody is a little bit on a different level. So for some people, it's really the first time that they can hang a painting. Other people are so known. Um, it's kind of a ritual to be here because Rolling Ridge is a really wonderful place. We have so many groups uh, from all over and it's kind of an honor to actually have a painting here. And it's, it's really nice to be, uh, to be an artist in an artist community and to bring it to the public that is joy. To, to paint at home is nice, to paint in a studio is nice, but if somebody can come and enjoys the paintings and criticizes it, it doesn't always have to be uh, that they like it. It's sometimes just a challenge. That's the joy in it. So it's always thrilling to see a, a new show because we don't know how they're going to respond to a particular theme, whether it has to do with joy or transitions or winter landscapes. Um, you can see beauty anywhere, and uh, we're grateful for the artists who help us notice. I'd just like to say uh, for folks who are listening, thanks for finding Rolling Ridge, and thanks for coming here, bringing your groups and events and individuals here. Thanks uh, for coming and making this place a, a true part of the North Andover and the Merrimack Valley community. I, we've been blessed, and keep coming. Thanks so much. And this is Reverend Larry Peacock's last art gallery at the Rolling Ridge before his retirement in June. They're having a retirement celebration honoring Larry on June 26th at the retreat and conference center. For more information, check out their website at www.rollingridge.org. Now it's time to check in with two of our favorite correspondents, Lester Rugg and Irina Grasso, here to check in from the North Andover Senior Center with news and updates about what they've got going on for the month of June. Hello everyone, Lester Rugg here. I should caution all seniors that sunscreen is due and needed during these summer months. And for most men, uh, you know, uh, for all of us, I think a hat is also uh, in order. On that note, I'd like to introduce my, uh, my co-host here, um, Irina Grasso. And tell us a little bit about what we have coming up for our lecture. Okay. For the lecture series on June 6th, we have Marina Dutzman. Can you tell us a little bit about her? I wish I could, but I haven't <laughs> read the book yet. <laughs> this is going to be June 6th, and she'll be signing books if anybody wants to purchase them for $20. Well... It's certainly, uh, you know, a, a special bargain for special people. And on that note, what else do we have going? On June 13th, we have Mary McHugh, Political Science. I can tell you about Mary McHugh. Okay. <laughs> a little bit, anyway. <laughs> uh, number one, she's the most exciting lecturer that we uh, have, and she comes back every year, and we will look forward to her presence. She gives another uh, perspective as to uh, the political scene and makes us a little more aware of you know some of the real issues that are we are faced with and what else do we have Irina? on june 20th we have nanette mcdonald of long-term care june, june 27th, 27th um, donna delaney 
She's a wonderful person. She's been with us for a very long time. And uh, it's Donna Delaney Day. Uh, this is her last year, and um, she um, is retiring. And we wanted to make a special day available to her as well. And Donna, we wish you the best. Okay, on June 17th at 10.30, Sam Sculptures in Hampton Beach. I've been to one of those. Oh, my God. The sculptures, you wouldn't believe. Uh, June 22nd at 9 o'clock, they will be leaving to the, go to the State House in Boston. I can tell you a little bit about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Every year, I, I think that we uh, have this program here. This is one to sign up for, too, as well. It's mm -hmm. all inspiring to go through, uh, the, you know, uh, to go through the State House is uh, inspirational. The volunteers will be needed for the 4th of July race bag stuffing on June 29th from noon to 3 p.m. We did this last year and it was very successful. On the 20th of June, we're going to have an on the summer ice cream trip at 1230. Now that's something that's new. Everyone screams for ice cream. <laughs> 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 and last but not least, the fresh table finally will begin in June. We're going to have Wednesday. fresh table? Yes. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to sign up before oh, I, I, the end of Friday so that they can order everything yeah. and have it prepared for next yeah. week. Now, this is on Wednesday that they have it? Every Wednesday. Every from Wednesday. Now, yeah, from now until yeah. they decide. Yeah. What what time does, uh, does Noon it start? Noontime. Noontime. Mm -hmm. time. Okay, yeah. As we face the <laughs> summer, <laughs> which is upon us here, um, we've, we've covered some of the things that we're doing uh, yeah, here at the center. We like to think that we're probably one of the more active uh, places around. Uh, we always like to see uh, more people. If you have a, a question or an answer or, or a, a thought, um, come join us for a, a day. We welcome all new uh, newcomers, and uh, I think you'll find that our senior center is a very welcoming place and a heartwarming overall. Would you say that would be yes. the case? Yeah. See you next month. And on that note, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Lester and Irina. One natural treasure we have in North Andover is the Joyce Andrews Trail. On May 17th, the North Andover Improvement Society and the Friends of North Andover Trails teamed up to celebrate the town's special trail. After the group walked the trail, town manager Andrew Mailer said a few words to commemorate the occasion. Take a look. Joyce Andrews, who was uh, one of the founding members of Friends of North Andover Trails, um, and, uh, and she passed, when was it? 2014. Uh, she was um, a huge part of the energy behind our group. She served as treasurer. Um, she, she, she is respons one of the people responsible for this group's existence. And this trail honors her, her, uh, her legacy. This is a wonderful destination community. Not just a community to live in, it's a wonderful community to live in, but it's a destination. I mean, if you come here, I was here this past weekend for um, an event up at the track, the high school track. But every weekend in North Andover, there's a lot happening. And it's all positive. So it may be something at the common in which there's might be sheep sharing or some other event or festival event. But if you go on the trails and you look at cars, it is a wonderful destination do you think there are years of town that, that folks that are uh, don't spend as much time volunteering as you folks may, um, that may have an interest to know in their own community where they are, or people who come and use our trails, or come to our festivals, or go to different events and come here and enjoy the community, and they may want to know what's here, um, and you feel we can help by bringing some kind of uh, common standard signage that would direct people and look appropriate, um, we're willing to invest in that way to, to make um, financially participate from a sign perspective too. So at Mazarenko Farm we, we hope to do um, a pretty significant bridge over a wetland crossing um, down on Bradford Street, um, add two new neighborhood trails going up to Hickory Hill Lane and French Farm and connecting that in and also improving the signage at the intersections, um, hopefully working with the high school shop 
um, to do some nice routed signs at the, um, for the intersections and where the trails enter the fields. I am a huge advocate that we need to protect approximately 120, I don't know where the lines are drawn, but we need, to, we need to protect the space, which is um, the trails and, and the, the open space going down the line. Well, the rain held out on May 22nd for the annual sheep sharing festival. Residents of the town flocked to the common to see the sheep herding demos, play cow pie bingo, and of course, see the fluffy sheep get shorn. Let's check it out. gentleman about an hour ago. <laughs> Happy customer. Oh, I did my own too. <laughs> this is a barber chair for a sheep. What does a barber chair do? Spins around, right? This is not a trained sheep. I have total control of this sheep with my feet. Did I hurt the sheep? So the first wool we take off is the belly wool. Now, the belly's not very clean. She's been laying around on it. And we take off what's called the top knot. All right, well, the top knot is kind of like the belly wool and we used to throw it away. We don't throw it away anymore. We sell it to Donald Trump. <laughs> now, the funny thing is going to be when this sheep goes back in the truck, one of the lambs in the truck is her baby. And the baby's not going to recognize mom. Mom used to have long, beautiful hair. But it'll take a minute and the baby will go, well, it sounds like mom. It smells like mom. It tastes like mom. Guess what? It must be mom. The, the thing about the demos is that there's, um, there's such a need because kids or even adults have no idea where their food is from and where their, mm -hmm. where their clothes come from. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're no longer an agrarian society. Mm -hmm. And so we have to educate people as to this stuff. Thank you so much. Oh, this is so just welcome. all of these things I had no idea about, and it's so great to learn. As you can see around us, we have so many people from North Andover and tons of kids checking out these adorable sheep. One guy is still kind of on the chopping block there to get sheared, so he's looking really fluffy and soft, but we know that's not going to last because, of course, we need to use the wool and need to be educated about where it goes and where it all comes from, right? And, uh, you know, they, you know they, they like to go to the beauty parlor. Yep. And, uh, Don't we all? <laughs> once a year, you know. It's, Absolutely. It's, uh, you. You're quite welcome. It's awesome. Any last closing fun facts about sheep that we need to know? <laughs> All right, awesome. They don't pay well. They don't tip well. <laughs> they don't tip well. Well, they look really cute. So we've enjoyed being here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Great job, Morgan. And you can catch more from the Sheep Sharing Festival, including the full interview from the sheep shearer himself, Andy Rice, right here on the Cam Access channel.
The high school auditorium was filled on Tuesday, May 24th for the annual high school spring concert. The Scarlet and Black Singers opened the show, followed by the Wind Ensemble, then the Symphonic Band. The show closed with the concert choir, with surprise guests from the classes of 2009 through 2015. Let's check out the highlights. And now our community calendar events. The North Andover High School Scholarship Night will be held on Wednesday, June 8th. And the high school graduation will be the following Friday, June 10th. On June 12th, the Historical Society will be hosting a brunch in the style of the year 1812 at the Parsons Bernard House. This brunch fundraiser will help support the new visitor center in the Parsons Bernard House. The deadline to buy tickets is June 3rd. From June 16th through June 20th, Windrush Farm is hosting their Trot Trot Trail 5K race. For more information about the race, check out their website at www.windrushfarm.org. And now for some final thoughts from all of us here at the Journal. In our fast-paced world, we all want to be as responsive as possible. Texting one another has made this easier than ever. However, texting and driving is never a good combination, as I personally witnessed a distracted driver run off the road earlier today on my way here. Statistics say people who text and drive are 23% more likely to be involved in a car crash, and I personally believe that number is much higher. Did you know there are many applications for smartphones that will automatically text back the person who texted you while you are driving, letting them know you are driving at that moment. This way, when you feel their message has been received, this way you will feel their message has been received, and when you arrive alive, you can personally respond. Some apps to check out for Android or iPhone are Cell Control, Drive Safe Mode, and Safe Drive. All of these apps are available from your favorite app store, so check it out online. And as always, if you have a new story or idea for a segment here at The Journal, please email us at thejournal at northandovercam.org.
Well, that will wrap things up for this week. I'm Ron Carpenito. Thanks for joining us.